Hello everyone, following the awesome interview with Wolf around Pixie, I thought I'd give it a shot and show you how to use it as a getting started because I think it's a super powerful tool. So if you open up a terminal, I'm in a particular folder, you need to have Pixie installed. So once you install Pixie, you're up and ready to go. So let's start with doing a Pixie and let's make it a init. I'm going to do init and I want it to be the Python project. I'm going to give it a name, Pixie, Pixie demo. So this is creates a folder there. So let's go into this folder, Pixie demo, see what we've got. So I have a Python project TOML file, which is very basic. There's a few things which are a bit new. These tool Pixie as a little bit different to what typically a Py project TOML has, but it's got the basic things to get a project going and how to build things. Okay. So why is this so powerful? So on my machine, if I say Python, I don't have a Python installed here. So this means that when I'm in my command window, this doesn't work so far. So good. So when I say I would like to do Pixie shell, I'm actually going to go into the environment, of my folder specified in that Py project tunnel. And now what I'm going to say is if I say Python, I have by default Python 3.12. So how do I know this? So if I say which Python, it turns out that in my folder, there's a dot Pixie environments of Python. But what's nice here is I can actually say Pixie add Python and uh, equals 3.11. So this really makes life easy to switch between all the different versions of Python and be able to control it in a nice particular environment. Okay. And if I say which Python now, and we do Python version, I now have Python 3.11 and this is exactly what I wanted to do. Now above and beyond this, you probably would like to see what's installed. So if I do Pixie list, you can see this is maybe not as elegant to see. Let me look at that, like that for a second. You have the different packages and these are the two ones that I installed. So I have my Pixie demo edited and my Python. So this is great. And if I was to, for example, say, uh, Pixie play Python, this is another way of just starting my Python uh, environment. But if I had files now here, I could actually invoke them the same way I would do with Python. So let's do that. And I'm going to use Visual Studio Code as my platform because I, I like. Now that I'm in my Visual Studio environment, the folder that I just opened, you can see a few things, few different files that appear here. So the tool Pixie dependencies is nice. It shows me which Python version. It shows me which channels I'm working on. And it's got some built-in things on how to do the packages. So this is all good. So also got a log file, which is really nice because it specifies exactly everything I have. And the environment, this is where, if you go look underneath it, this is where you actually see my Python is installed. But it's actually interesting. It's not that it's installed here. It's actually using UV underneath the hood. And instead of just having the files here, I might have got symbolic links. So it stalls, UV stalls my Python in a central place on my machine. And there's symbolic links making it super fast to get things going. The git ignore, this is a nice thing to have, and this is all nice house housekeeping. So if I open up a terminal just to see where we are, I could still do my pixie shell like I did before, and I'm going to do my pixie list so you can see in the list. So if I want to add things, let's say I want to add a numpy, this is a simple way of doing things. So add numpy, and that's great. Typically what you would end up doing is you do some kind of Python stuff. So let's try hello world. So I'm going to say calculation dot QI and I'm going to say dead my times two a, and that's going to be error to a plus a. What you would typically do is you'd say Python and Python calculation, and this runs nicely. Obviously nothing happened. So let's do a disp hello world to print, kind of uh, see this, but you can also get Pixie to do this. So you say Pixie run Python and calculation. Now you might say, why bother with Pixie run? Because what it's actually doing is now you can have this thing called task. So if you look here in the, there's something here called task. So it's not uncommon when you're developing Python that sometimes you want to debug, sometimes you want to run it with different command lines, instead of always remembering these things and configure it with your run and debug files and VS code, you can maybe add a task. So let's do this. Let's say pixie task add my run, and I'm going to call it Python calculation.py. 
I created that task and now I can say pixie and do the part run. I can just say run my run. And this is really nice because now all of a sudden I'm beginning to see the power of being able to maybe I'd have a testing run or maybe I'd be able to have a deployment. And this starts to integrate really nicely with build tools so that you can integrate it nicely with Conda Forge, which was the premise at the beginning where Wolf specified. Above and beyond this, sometimes people get confused. What about Conda versus PyPI? So you can always do Pixie, might add minus PyPI and let's say PyTest. So I want to get the PyTest package from PyPI as opposed from the Conda. So let's look at this, pick the list. And let me make this disappear. So you can now see that my NumPy is coming from my Conda. Make this a bit bigger for everybody. And you can see my PyTest and Pluggy, which comes as a dependency of uh, PyTest. It comes from PyPI. So that itself is a really useful way of doing things that you can mix and match them. Above and beyond this, you also have this concept that you could create a separate environment, right? So what do I mean by a separate environment? Well, we could go to the, the, the documentation of Pixie itself. So this is the documentation of Pixie underneath Predev. You go here. I would probably like to look at tutorials because I'm using Python. Just so we're clear, Pixie's broader than just Python, but they've got a nice uh, setup. And you could read carefully what other things that you can do here. What I also like to call out is this thing of optional dependencies, right? So sometimes when you're developing, you, instead of having a requirements txt and a requirements dev docs txt, you, this is a nicer way of doing it with having additional things. So let's do that and see what happens. So now by doing this, you can see I have Pixie task. I have my dependencies, but also I have something here, which is test project optional dependencies. PyTest is now part of my test environment. And it tells me when the feature test is not defined, but used in, a, in any environment. So why would you actually use this? So you could come down here a little bit further and say, create your environments. What does this look like? You can say I have a default environment and a, a test environment. I, what I want to do is run PyTest associated in the test environment. So the missing part in all of this is uh, you have to add a task. So I like this thing of saying pixie add task. So task add feature to test. And I want to use the test command for PyTest. So let's run that and we'll see what happens. Now we've added a task called test task. So I have a pixie tool feature test task. And what this enables me to do is to say pixie run test. And this now creates an environment called test pulling in the PyTest package and it's type running the command pytest. So this is the equivalent if I had done this. This makes it particularly nice and interesting to integrate with other environments such as Conda 4. Now, the purpose of this video is not to go through what is a pytest and how to do it. So uh, bear with me as maybe you would do something very rough around something like this and you would maybe say test calculation.py and then what you would do is say test calculation calculation, um, then you would maybe give it a cert, and then you would say, test and development, does this work in the first place? So I'm going to do my test. It notices it didn't work out. Ah, I guess I made a little mistake here. I'll put in my calculation here and let's move that. So it picks this kind of telling you that there's a better way of doing this, right? So this is how PyTest work. So that's all good. But now what we would probably want to do is to say my, let's bring it in. So let's say from, for, let's just say from calculation or my time times two. And then what we could say is my, my times two, one, is that true? Let's run it. And then what do you see? No, this is not correct. So that's working nicely. And what you would then say is, is this correct? And then yeah, everything is working nicely. Independently of the my the PyTest part of things, what is nice in all of this is actually this Py project Tumble, which has got two different environments. It also has its dependencies categorized, creates a log file with the different sources from PyPI and Conda without having issues of max, mixing and matching. 
this becomes reproducible. You have the possibility to have in your pixie folder your environments of your binaries, and you can see that these are the symbolic links so that it's not always installed here, not physical copies, and it's tightly integrated with UV. These are just some of the nice things that were spoken about in the podcast. If you want to learn more, please feel free to discover it. But I think this is a nice overview of what Pixie is all about. Thank you very much for listening.